What's up, Dragon Brood? So today we're going to be covering a topic that seems to not get as much attention for as much as people ask about it. But we're going to be talking about sideboards. But here's the thing, and, I, and I'm going to get this out the way now because it is going to sound a little bit harsh, but I can't count the number of times I see people on social media or in people's streams or whatever saying like from the bare minimum, you know, a, a creator puts up a, a deck list and they say, oh, well, I need a download link. Well, OK, they provide that. And it's like, well, I need a sideboard. Oh, well, I need a sideboard guide. And just like people are asking a lot of already people who are putting in time. I know I've spent like full work days effectively working on one deck list. So if I can give somebody the tools to be able to create a sideboard for themselves or at least have a better understanding, I think that'll do us all a good bit of good a good bit of good all do us some good maybe that's a better way to phrase that anyway let's talk about sideboards today also a quick word to a partner remember to check out shop.ultrapro.com if you want to get anything to outfit your decks sleeves Actually, even if you want stuff for non-magic stuff, they have a lot of stuff for like Pokemon and anime and things like that as well. Check them out. If you see something that's cool that you want, remember you can get the item name and number and just take that to your local store and have them order it for you. You can help your local store, still get something cool. Everybody wins. And Ultra Pro is a big supporter of local game stores. All right. So getting into the content today. We are going to cover kind of two aspects. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the fact that some people may not care about sideboards because you only play best of one format, right? Uh, but some people do want to try best of three, but they don't necessarily have the tools to do so because you do need to understand at least building a sideboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at that first. And then we'll probably do a part two where we talk about sideboarding techniques as far as what's good and bad in different situations. But for now, today, we're just going to cover the construction of the sideboard itself, because I think that's kind of like step one to kind of get everybody to a position of confidence. But looking in here, we're going to look at a mono green deck. So this is something simple. It's a one color deck. It's just a creature deck trying to do some big things, run the opponent over, right? So it's easy to understand, but when we go into the sideboard, we kind of have a sideboard. It's just all over the place, right? And the question becomes, is this a good or a bad sideboard? Personally, I would say this is very medium because it's largely unfocused. As an example here, we have multiple removal cards in the form of Blizzard Brawl, Inscription of Abundance, and Ram Through. Now, which one of these do we want more of or do we want two of them? Uh, part of the, the issue, too, is you have to figure out how much space you can maximize or what you need to dedicate to. That's kind of the first thing here, because you need to understand what's a problem for you. And oftentimes that comes down to what does the format look like? In this case, I'm not sure 100 percent which one we want, but let's take a look back at the deck itself. Knowing that something like Ram Through requires you to have, doesn't require, but it gets a benefit from you having trampling creatures, we kind of take a quick cruise through the creatures and say, okay, well, Ogro's Troll has trample, and Jim Razor has trample or can give something trample. We do have an Elder Gargaroth, we've got Vorinclex. It's like, okay, maybe we want more Ram Throughs. And it's an instant speed removal, which is also fantastic. So if you can have something at instant speed, that's usually preferred. So let's increase this and let's remove the inscriptions of abundance. They are nice, but not necessarily the thing we need drastically. And then let's go up on Blizzard Brawl. And again, I want to check the rest of the deck and say, okay, we are playing a bunch of snow lands. So the odds of us being able to get to four or three snow lands to be able to get the advantage from Blizzard Brawl is actually not that hard. So that makes a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and make sure we up the Blizzard Brawl, we up the Ramthers. Now, the next question might be like, well, why so many removal cards and what do we want them against? Well, I think it just depends on what the format looks like. There are some times where you might want ram throughs in a field of a bunch of like tokens or small creatures, right? If you're trying to fight bigger things, 
maybe you want more Blizzard Brawls. You know, but ultimately, we may end up just reducing down to a single removal card even when this is all done. Depends on what the rest of the deck looks like and the format looks like. Because as we go through here, one of the things I see a lot of people make a mistake of also is putting, I guess we'll call them flashy cards, into the sideboard. The truth is, the sideboard is not where your flashy cards go. Mostly because when you're bringing something in from the sideboard, it's because you need it. You're rarely going to need the flashy thing. So if you can't say specifically what this card does or why it would be used or what deck it's good against or anything, why are we putting it in the deck? I mean, we can kill a flyer with a blizzard brawl or a ram through or even the card we took out when you're talking about uh, the inscription of abundance. All of those things are better than playing Nylea's intervention to just kill a flyer especially since you can do it for less mana with each of those cards in most cases. So this card definitely shouldn't even be in the sideboard. If you want to play anything flashy, those should be like one ofs or two ofs or something in your main deck for fun and flavor. But the sideboard has no room for flashiness. It really is just function. <laughs> like that is it. If the card doesn't have a function, it doesn't belong in your sideboard. So that already frees up a spot if we want it for something. Now, if you're still running into stuff like, let's say, rogues, right? That's still popular, problematic thing for a lot of people. Or you're playing against decks that also just go long. Maybe a bunch of removal heavy decks. Then something like Chain Web Arachnir is a very good card, right? There's a chance you'll get to play it out of the graveyard again later. It's going to be bigger. It blocks stuff in the rogues matchup. It keeps your graveyard low. So it's doing a lot of things. So then we start saying, okay, well, would we rather just have more like Chainweb Arachnir? Probably. So why don't we go ahead and add that spot there? And then we have like these weird cards. Like Shadow Spear is a card a lot of people enjoy throwing into lists. But a lot of times if you ask people, they don't really know why it's there. Really, most of the time, people are playing Shadow Spear for things like the Mono Red matchup. Or in some cases, it does give other things trample. And that does help when you're going against smaller creatures. Sometimes even these mono-white aggro decks. A lot of times they don't necessarily have a blocker that's bigger than 3 or 4 toughness. So making a creature even a 5 or a 6 that you can come over and trample is actually really good. It guarantees some damage and you'll get some life to be able to keep battling back and forth. So I don't hate this card. This one can kind of keep its space. It has some fringe uses. But I will say, now that we're looking at like, do we need those 6 removal cards? Coming back here and looking at the main deck, we say, alright... What else do we have for removal already in here? Are we playing any? The answer looks like not much, just a couple of Primal Mites. So we don't want to cut too much, but we do know in some of those matchups, you're already going to be bringing in some cards. So now you have to think about how many cards we're bringing in for some matchups and how many cards overlap. That's another thing you need to understand as well. Is there a world where we're going to bring in three Blizzard Ball, three Ram Throughs, and two Shadow Spears against a creature deck. Not likely. That's eight cards. That changes a big, significant portion of your main deck. So that's probably not something you're going to want to do, because then you have to figure out what eight cards do I take out in those matchups. And at most, you might be taking out Great Hinge, maybe a Turn Timber Symbiosis, possibly your Vivian or your Vorinclex, and that's probably it. Right, You want most of these other things so you can fight creature for creature. So you're not going to take a lot of those out. So now we have to look and say, okay, well, maybe we don't necessarily want all these removal cards. In that case, let's just go for the most efficient removal. And let's go ahead and up the Blizzard Brawls. Let's cut the Ram Throughs. And then that frees up more space. And this is where you start getting a really cleaner sideboard. You start looking and saying, like, okay, now you're really starting to see where everything's coming together here. What I would consider doing here is something like Derek's Harbinger fits perfectly into this type of deck. Because, one, it's protection from black. And when you look at the format, a lot of the good removal right now is black. So that's going to really give you a little bit of edge in some of those matchups. It does help you draw extra cards, technically. So that's also good. And the fact that it's a creature, so it's staying 100% on theme with what the rest of the deck's trying to do. Just play oversized creatures at each cost and really take advantage of the board. 
And it's not going to cripple you or be any more of concern as a casting cost because it's two green and one colorless, which means if you do happen to draw one of the faceless havens we have in the list, it's not going to hurt you too much. So I would just go to four of these. And then now you have one additional slot to play with. If we don't know what we want a lot of time, it's to totally okay to just say, all right, I know what I want for that matchup. Now, start thinking about each individual matchup and say, do I have stuff in the sideboard? But let me say this, make it a matchup that you are concerned about. You're not going to answer every single thing. So don't be like, oh, my opponent has this flyer. My opponent has this graveyard thing, right? We're not going to stop every single thing. But think about the big decks in the format. We can say, all right, do we have something for rogues? Yes, we can bring in some combination of probably all of the chain web arachnids and a couple of blizzard brawl. Maybe give us a chance to kill one of the crabs. Nothing wrong with that. Could even be argued that you bring in Garrick's Harbinger because their removal tends to be black. They're not going to be able to deal much with it. They could possibly steal it with like lull mages, whatever. But otherwise, not a huge deal. Do we have something for a mono white aggro? Yes, some of the same cards being Blizzard Brawls, being Shadow Spears works there. Same thing for mono red, you can use that there. But question becomes now, let's say something like Sultai Ultimatum. Do we have good removal or good answers to bring in? I think Garrick Harpinger still works there. I think that's totally fine, but that might be the only card. But sometimes the question is, is that enough? The answer might be yes. So you have to think about all these types of things. One thing I will say, though, is when we talk about something like Mardu Sacrifice, wanting to use things out of the graveyard, when you're talking about Wo Strider, Croxa, it's like, hmm, we don't have a thing to deal with that yet. Well, how do we solve that problem? We have to take a look and say, okay, what can we cut back on possibly and make room for that? And what would that card be? Well, looking back at our main deck, we do already have Scavenging Ooze, but we only have room for one more. So maybe we just find room for one more card and since we've already said in some of these matchups we're already bringing in shadow spear sometimes garrick's harbinger and bringing in blizzard brawl maybe we just cut one of the blizzard brawls and we find room for that last scavenging ooze uh why did i put on caps lock <laughs> uh all right scavenging ooze cool we'll put the fourth one there so now this is starting to look like a good package of cards, right? We have stuff for most major matchups. If something else pops up we can't deal with, well, we just have to take it for what it is. Now, I will say we still have a situation here, though, that we say, man, we don't have anything in sideboard to deal with artifacts and enchantments. The reason we skipped over that is because your main deck is already handling some of that in the form of Gem Razor. So you don't have to go way out of your way. And there's not that many enchantments and artifacts we're worried about right now. So this is probably going to solve the majority of your answers. Now, we're not talking about the overall quality of the deck or anything like that. This is mostly just saying, if this were a deck we were choosing to play, does this sideboard make sense? I believe it does. It covers a lot of our major bases, and you kind of get to see the process there of why we trim the cards we did. And this gives you a variety of things that you can use in all of those different matchups. You should rarely be stuck with a situation where you say, man, I just don't have anything to bring in here. Now, for those of you that watch the channel, this is a Sultai Zombies deck that I put up, I guess, like a week ago or so. And this is one I didn't have a sideboard for at all on this list. And another thing, too, some people ask, why don't I build more decks with sideboards? The reality is most of these I'm playing best of one because it's better for content because I make 30 minute videos and I want to show more matches against more deck types. So I'm not even worried about that, and I leave that to the viewers to do what they want to do. But sometimes when I do have a little extra time, I go ahead and toss one in there. But now, hopefully, when this is done, you'll be able to do it yourself. But the reason I bring this one up is this is a little bit different. This is also a creature deck of sorts, but it's on a whole different plan. This is playing a little bit of a longer game, but also it's a theme deck. So that can affect some of our choices, too. So looking at this, we're saying, okay, we know what the deck is. You're trying to remove some of your opponent's early stuff. You're trying to play the long game with your zombies. Maybe get something like Narfi out late or Reflections and really come across. And then you have Polacranos, that's a big hitter, right? So it's just quality all around solid deck making use of zombies and snow creatures. 
So let's start just saying, okay, well, let's look at snow and see what else we could bring in. Is there anything in the theme that we want to begin with? Because this will also help your deck when you're trying to sideboard cards in. You won't be disrupting what you're trying to do that much. But there's really not a lot. Like I said, again, we have the option of Blizzard Brawl because this is a snow deck of sorts. So if we want a couple of removal, we can we can stick a couple over there for creature fights. Maybe even an additional blood in the snow. We have one main, we can stick one in the sideboard. Or maybe if we're going against other big creature decks and we just can't seem to get rid of them, uh, that's a thing we could consider. Though, I don't think there's a ton of other snow things we're actually going to want. Yeah, it looks like there's not that much to pick from. Uh, arguably, I would say something interesting you can do here is put some Faceless Havens in the sideboard. How many snow lands are we playing? We're playing 1, 8, 10. So maybe that's not enough. So we can't really look at that. Neat idea, but probably isn't going to cut it. Now, a card I would say you can use for some of those uh, matchups would be something like Crawling Barons. So if your opponent is successfully dealing with your creatures continually, well, you can play something like this that's still a land, so it still functions and helps you cast things, but this becomes much harder to remove. One, because it gets counters on it, so it dodges stuff like Heartless Act. Granted, it'll still be able to be killed with like an Eliminate, but a lot of the other removal does say non-land and things like that, so this gives you another out and another creature. But granted, it doesn't fit the theme necessarily, but it could be a necessary evil in some matchups. But thinking about theme, there's another card here I want to consider for the sideboard. Crippling Fear. Because this card can give us a bit of an edge in creature matchups. We know that things like mono red, mono green, you know, the mono white aggro decks are out there. And a lot of those do play very small creatures. Very few of them get up to four or five toughness. So it's possible you could play a zombie on your first couple of turns, maybe even your third or fourth turn, and then you play Crippling Fear, leaving you with the creatures and your opponent with none. Maybe they have one left, something like that, but it becomes much easier to deal with that. So maybe you put a couple of Crippling Fear in here because, you, because you're playing on theme, this gives you the opportunity to deal with your opponent's creatures in mass and not harm any of your own. Then again, we come back and talking about some of these other options. Like, we have access to three colors here, so this does open things up quite a bit for what we could do. But, again, let's look at zombies and just say, hey, what other zombies are there that we could take advantage of here? Not a whole lot, unfortunately. We have stuff like Ephemia, which is neat, but we don't have a ton of enchantments. We could play another Priest of the Haunted Edge, but that's really just a blocker more than anything else, so we probably don't want to do that. I don't mind putting in a Mur Murderous Rider as another removal, but also a way to deal with Planeswalkers. I like that quite a bit. And then we kind of start looking and nitpicking and saying, okay, what can we do? Maybe we, if we know somebody's playing a lot of removal, we could go ahead and bring in Rise of the Dreadmar. Maybe if they play a Sweeper or something, we can get two, three extra zombies out of it. I don't hate having that in the side. It does a lot of what we want. Some people really want to play cards like Necromentia. This is, there's, I won't say debates, but it's a type of card that if you know what your opponent's playing and they have a single thing that's bad for you, well, then you just go and get it. If you're worried about Emergent Ultimatum, for instance, against the uh, Soltai Ultimatum decks with Yorian, you go ahead and just play this, right? So we'll put two of those in the sideboard. We do have other discard already in the main deck in the form of Duress. But I don't mind against control decks, heavy creature removal decks, like we said, the Yorian decks. Go ahead and just play another one. We'll just get the fourth copy in there. And then because we don't have really ways to deal with artifacts and enchantments, which are pretty wide ranging, and I don't know what we're really going to need to worry about. Let's go ahead and play a couple of things here, probably in the form of Wilt. And the reason I'm going with Wilt as my choice, well, actually... Here's what I do sometimes, if you just want to know. I can put in, like, destroy enchantment. And then that way, I can just see all the cards that let me destroy enchantments. And right now, it's like, what are we really concerned about? Not a lot. You know, when you say, okay, return to nature is really nice. Are we worried about exiling a card from opponent's graveyard? Eh, sometimes, but maybe with only one deck right now, so it's not that big a deal. 
So I would rather take something like Wilt that does allow me to cycle. So if I don't need it at that point in the game, I can get rid of it, maybe find another answer. But sometimes also just putting a card in the graveyard because maybe I need to use something like Polokranos and I don't have enough things in the yard yet. So let's go ahead and put in a couple of Wilt in here. Now that we have this kind of built out, we say, okay, we've got a Duress for those slower matchups. We have Necromentia we might be bringing in, but we don't hate that. Rise of the Dreadmarn. Okay, but now that means against those matchups, we're probably bringing in five cards, possibly six or seven. That starts to become quite a bit. So we have to say, okay, maybe something like Rise of the Dreadmarn, while nice, is not necessarily the card we need because we're going to be bringing in too many cards in that type of situation. And maybe that's not really what we need. And we're talking about bringing in Crawling Barons too. Though Crawling Barons is mostly just going to be a land and not really overpowering anything else. But something we do have to think about. So maybe here we say, all right, maybe Rise of the Dreadmarn isn't the answer we want. And maybe we can get some extra stuff to deal with graveyard things in the form of Elspeth Nightmare. This can function as another removal against smaller creature decks. It can actually be brought in against the slower control decks because the second chapter that lets you take a non-land, non-creature card is almost always going to hit. And I think sometimes people forget about that. So this is actually a pretty flexible card to have in the sideboard. So now running this down, we've got a Duress, two Blizzard Brawl, two Wilt, two Elspeth's Nightmare, one Murderous Rider, two Necromentia, two Crippling Fear, one Blood in the Snow, two Crawling Barons. The weakest card now actually is starting to look like Blizzard Brawl because we're saying, okay, well, we have Murderous Rider that's coming in and possibly Elspeth's Nightmare and Crippling Fear and or Blood in the Snow. So maybe Blizzard Brawl doesn't get to cut it anymore, right? Now it goes away. And then we have to say, okay, well, what other matchups are we possibly going to bring some cards in for? And now we just start talking about just versatility and maybe we come back to something like the Spider that we were playing uh, in the green deck. Chain Web Arachnir, because it does have uses, again, against rogues and things like that. It's good against long game matchups where you can play it out of the graveyard. It just does a few different things that are solid, even though it's not on theme and it's not a snow creature and it's not a zombie. Sometimes you just play cards because they're useful and fit what you're trying to do. But I think here, this is kind of a whole different way to build the sideboard because you're trying to take into account the theme of what you're already doing in cards in your deck that work with these, not just only solving problems. So you can go two different ways with that. Now I will say, depending on how you're building your sideboard, that comes down a lot to what the rest of the format looks like, because it's not gonna do you a lot of good to put cards in the board that you're not gonna really use. That said, a lot of times you just don't know that right off the bat, especially right when a new set comes out or there's a major fall rotation, you're just not gonna know. So all you really do is think about large themes and just say, okay, let's worry about control decks, about aggro decks, maybe things with enchantments, maybe things with graveyards, and really start filling that out. And then over the course of the first two to three weeks, you go ahead and let that settle in, and then you make adjustments as necessary. Trying to solve it all at one time just isn't gonna do you a lot of good. Almost every good player is going to tell you that those sideboards come together over the course of weeks, sometimes hundreds of games that they play. It's rarely going to be the first thing you put together and that's going to be it. So don't beat yourself up too much if you feel like you didn't get it right on the first go. The odds are you probably did. But this should be a good start. Now, like I said, there's going to be probably a part two where we're going to talk about specific instances on how to sideboard. But for now, this should be a good starting point to get a lot of you jumping off to creating sideboards for a lot of those best of one decks, especially if you're going from best of one, at least attempting best of three for the first time, or maybe even coming from something like commander and jumping right into best of three to try to be more competitive. Hopefully this answers a lot of those questions for you and at least gets you that bit of confidence to at least take that first step. And remember, if you haven't, please like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell because that lets you get notified every time I have one of these strategy videos up, but also lets me know that you appreciate what I'm doing. And as always, let me know down in the comments if you like this type of commentary, I guess, <laughs> or if you want to see something else or you have an idea for something or if you learned something from this that stood out for you. So that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.